the International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to the short version of Series 19, looking at the groups and teams of the 2023 Asian Cup, played in Qatar in January 2024. This episode is looking at Group B, Australia, Uzbekistan, Syria, and India. Here we go. It's the International Soccer Preview. I'm Kevin. And I'm Kiara. In the short version here, we're replacing uh, parts one and two of the full-length video, uh, oh, sorry, the full-length version, with a short summary of each team's history and a look at their recent form. Um, in that full-length version, Connor and Kevin introduce the teams in part one with some information about each country's location, population, and so on. Uh, part two is a history of each team with a deep dive into Asian Cup Finals history. They then look into performances in recent tournaments and end with an overview of the players. Right, so in this uh, short media cast, we will tag on part three from the full-length version, which is Connor's and my discussion of the prospects of each team. So, if this short version grabs your interest, keep an eye out for those full-length versions and player versions, which will come later in 2023. Stay tuned at the end for more info, information on accessing our media casts. Okay, so without delay, let's get into the four teams of Group B of the Asian Cup Finals. These are Australia, Uzbekistan, Syria, and India. Okay, and we're going to begin with a kind of a summary of Australia's history. So uh, limited opportunities to reach the World Cup through the Oceanic region, that's uh, the OFC region, had them long wanting to join the Asian region. The OFC offered them only a half spot to the World Cup, and they didn't always win their regional cup to take that spot. They usually did, but apart from 1974, they lost the intercontinental playoffs that the half spot led to. Although they won it in 2006 and went on to their best finish in a World Cup, reaching the round of 16 there, their ambitions of joining the Asian region came to fruition uh, shortly after. However, opposition to the move, especially among it, uh, Middle Eastern teams, remained. Fears that Australia would dominate the region came true in that they have consistently taken one of the region's World Cup spots. However, fears that they would overpower Asian teams were ill-founded. In 2018 and 2022, they finished third in their final round group of World Cup qualifying and once again found, them having, found themselves having to qualify not only through an inter, intercontinental playoff, but also through uh, Asian regional playoffs too. In the Asian Cup, they have been among the top teams, passing the group stage every time since 2007, but only dominated in 2015 when they won the Cup as hosts. Quarterfinal finishes in 2007 and 2019 show that they are not the strongest team in the region. Yeah, looking at their recent performance, that quarterfinal finish in 2019 came, ironically, at the hands of Middle Eastern teams, the region that had most feared uh, their domination of the Asian region. They finished second in the group behind Jordan and were knocked out in the quarterfinal by UAE. Their difficulty in scoring goals against second and first tier teams remains a problem. Um, as in 2018, they struggled in the final round of World Cup 2022 qualification and finished third behind Saudi Arabia and Japan. Playoff wins over UAE and then Peru got them to the cup, uh, but not much was expected once they were there. However, they surprised by reaching the round of 16. Despite scoring one goal in each game, including games against both of the finalists, um, it does remain a problem and their overall strength in the Asian region is in question. All right, that's Australia. So we'll move on to the second team, Uzbekistan, and start with an overview of their history. 
Uh, despite improvements since their first tournament in 1996, to the point of becoming a strong second tier team consistent over other second tier teams, they were never a match for top tier teams in the region. They challenged those teams only with the odd win, usually exploiting them at a weak moment and even taking them to extra time or penalties in the latter stages of the Asian Cup. However, they have never had a year good enough to reach the World Cup or the top three in the Asian Cup, tantalizingly close though they've been. In looking at their recent performance, they have arguably taken a dip in form with their round of 16 finish in the 2019 Asian Cup and their failure to reach the final round of qualifying for the 2022 World Cup. Uh, but it is a harsh conclusion. In 2019, they were unlucky to meet Australia in the round of 16, and 2022 uh, came down to a lapse in their opening game against Palestine. Their form in 2023 Asian Cup qualifying and in the 2023 uh, Central Asian Football Association Cup um, remains as consistent as ever. Their loss to Iran showing that uh, top tier teams do still represent a ceiling though. Right, and uh, that's uh, Uzbekistan. We now move on to part uh, or to the third team, Syria, uh, beginning with a summary of their history. So for most of their history, Syria has been a, a weak second tier team, generally losing to stronger second tier teams like China, Jordan and Iraq. At times, they have risen to the level of a strong second tier team. This reflects in reaching the Asian Cup regularly in the 1980s, where they also came close to reaching the World Cup in 1986, and in recent times where they reached the final round of World Cup qualification in the last two editions, uh, coming close to the World Cup again in 2018. However, they are prone to flat performances even in those periods of strength. In 1982, they lost all games in World Cup qualifying, and in 2019, they disappointed in a good chance to pass the group stage of an Asian Cup for the first time. Looking at their recent performance, um, reaching the AFC playoff in 2018 was an amazing achievement. Um, especially considering that the domestic turmoil in war-torn Syria forced them to play their home games in far-flung Malaysia. They were even competitive with top-tier Australia, taking that playoff to extra time before losing. Uh, that showing made their last place finish in 2019 Asian Cup group stage all the more disappointing. They were also poor in the 2019 um, Western Asia Football Federation Cup, a local cup, um, where they finished last in the group of five uh, behind even Yemen. The 2021 Arab Cup also saw them knocked out at the group stage, um, a very inconsistent showing where they beat Tunisia but lost to Mauritania. Uh, in that light, they did well to reach the final round of 2022 World Cup qualifying, though it was an easy group with China, Philippines, Maldives and Guam. They did well to finish ahead of China with whom they exchanged wins, but looked weak in the final round with just a single win over their 10 games. All right. Well, that is Syria. And our last team in the group is India. So in the big picture, uh, India is really a feeble team given the size and population of their country uh, and their reputed passion for soccer and their long history. They had some success in the early years, uh, qualifying, in fact, for the 1950 World Cup, although they withdrew, and coming second in the 1964 Asian Cup. Since then, they have been a weak team in Asia, doing well to reach the Asian Cup in 1984, but out of their depth once there. In 2006, the Asian region created the Challenge Cup, a tournament for weak teams that were knocked out of the World Cup and Asian Cup in early rounds. Uh, India hosted and won the Challenge Cup in 2008, and this earned them passage into the 2011 Asian Cup. Once again, though, the competition at that level was far above them. In recent times, though, their form has taken a sudden jump. Yeah, um, perhaps a result of the burgeoning local soccer scene, India proved um, too strong in 2019 for entry into the Challenge Cup, uh, which is now called the Solidarity Cup. Instead, they finished first in their group, 
over Kyrgyzstan to qualify for the expanded tournament. They even impressed there, beating Thailand convincingly in their opener um, and failing to advance only because of an injury time goal by Bahrain in the third group stage uh, in the third group stage game. Uh, they maintained that form in 2022 World Cup qualifying, where they finished third in their second round group and once again won their third round group, this time over Hong Kong. While these results do not go beyond beating third tier teams, the 2019 Asian Cup saw them challenging second tier teams and marks good progress from the feebleness that they have shown throughout much of their career. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the uh, uh, of this short version, the summary section, summary and recent form section. And um, we're now going to move into part three of the full length discussion where Connor and Kevin discuss the prospects of these teams. So, Connor, I am not uh, convinced that Australia is as far ahead in the rankings as, uh, well, as the rankings suggest. I'm not sure they're that much stronger than the team. And uh, let's start with that. Do you think uh, they are? Are they kind of guaranteed first place winners, as the rankings would suggest here? Um, I, I think they're, you know, should be first place winners, but perhaps, yeah, not as much as um as the rankings do suggest i mean i think the the world cup perf performance was impressive but the qualifying for that world cup really wasn't when they were playing a lot of other asian teams and in recent matches you know they were quite competitive with uh uzbekistan recently so no i think their their placement is a bit artificially high and and perhaps even in comparison with with um you know japan or korea are the strongest teams in the group i don't think they're quite as as neck and neck with those teams as the uh the ranking suggests yeah i was going to bring that up myself that that uh you know i guess it'll 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 have to wait until the final rounds to see how they compete with teams like south korea and japan uh uh, uh as far as that goes but um do you think Uzbekistan or even Syria could challenge them? Um, I think at a game level, they're capable of taking points of Australia. I don't necessarily think they will um, finish ahead of Australia to win the group. Um, but I don't expect Australia will, you know, will have um, nine points at the end of it. I don't think they'll have a lot of easy games either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Am I right in thinking that Jordan finished ahead of them in 2019? Um, I'd have to double check, but that that does sound familiar. Yeah, I'll yeah. Just, so yeah. again, uh, 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 I find them a little bit unconvincing. And you mentioned the. <laughs> sorry, I'm checking too now. Uh, you mentioned the uh, the qualification. Uh, so if you check 2019, I'll look at the qualification there. Yeah, well, they did, in fact, lose to Jordan in the group stage in their opening game and, uh, yeah, finished second uh, in 2019. Yeah, and then uh, kind of scraped through to the World Cup, um, you know, with those playoff wins, but third place in the group, uh, not very convincing. And, uh, you know, we did talk uh, during the podcast about their scoring in the World Cup, which is good. They scored a goal in each of the games, but I still think scoring is a really big problem for them and I, I don't think as well as they did in the World Cup that they've really resolved that problem. So especially Uzbekistan's defense, I, I think could stand up to them and possibly Syria too. Yeah, I think it'll be an interesting, um, yeah, an interesting thing to look at. I think Uzbekistan, you know, I think it's Samaradov is a pretty prolific score at international level and India have that too with Sunil Chetri. Um, Australia don't really, um, yeah, probably have a, have a striker that you expect to be banging the goals in. Yeah, uh, it, could, it could be interesting. I'm kind of expecting uh, low-scoring games because Australia's defense is pretty solid. Uh, uh, I kind of have to agree with you that, that at the outset, I'd have to pick them as group winners, but um, uh, definitely uh, dropping some points to me. I, I kind of feel that they'll drop uh, at least one tie here. Yeah. Okay, and uh, we could ask a similar question about Uzbekistan, because Syria is quite far behind them in the rankings, but do you really think uh, uh, Syria is that far behind Uzbekistan? Yeah, I think there's only 20 points difference in 
the uh, FIFA rankings, but over 40 difference in, in ELO. So I guess we could kind of use that on which, which, you know, we think is reflexive. And we typically go with ELO, but I actually think they're probably a bit closer. I think the FIFA rankings might show their relative strength a little bit better. Um, I mean, I think Uzbekistan didn't get to the final round of qualification um, for World Cup play in 2022, where Syria did. But Uzbekistan, you know, on the historical trend, are a stronger team. They get there more regularly. Um, Uzbekistan's a bit of a team I, I have a bit of a soft spot for because they're kind of an almost team. They've had a couple yeah. near misses and even, you know, finishing second place and not getting to the final round of World Cup qualifying was a little bit unlucky. So um, they've kind of been on the wrong end of some close games. But I, whether they uh, are at their strongest point now, I'm, I'm not sure. I think there might be a little bit dip from recent form. Yeah, uh, Bahrain in 2006, that, that ridiculous uh, replayed game. And, and we saw that uh, that opening loss to Palestine really cost them in the uh, 2022 World Cup. So I think they're actually a very consistent team. And I've looked at their players for this cup. And actually, I think uh, you mentioned one of them. I think they're looking actually quite good in terms of talent. Um, but, you know, Syria's no pushover. You called uh, Uzbekistan an almost team, but I think during the uh, during the history we saw that uh, Syria was an almost team, often finishing like one point behind the advancing team yeah. uh, kind of thing. I think they're a little bit underrated here. Uh, but again, it's like both of them have taken a bit of a dip in form uh, recently, so it kind of comes down to whether they can uh, recover that form. Yeah, and see whether that dip was a blip or whether it's uh, maybe the start of a trend. But um, I, I would like to see both teams do well. I think they can be be exciting and and be competitive with 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 good teams in the Asian region. So they're kind of capable of a surprise. So I'd like to see both teams do well here. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm excited. I think they will do a bit better than the ranking suggest. I think for Uzbekistan, it really is a bit of a blip. Uh, for Syria, though, they've never really done well in, in an Asian Cup. They've kind of reached the Cup more often than expected, but progressed in the Cup uh, uh, less than they're capable of. So a bit of an odd team that way, but I think, uh, you know, strong enough to uh, put up a challenge here. Yeah, for sure. And they, uh, again, uh, in 2018, so it was a few years ago, but they tied Australia twice in a really important AFC game. So um, they can definitely do it against the better teams. Yeah, the head-to-head -head is really interesting because all of these teams, uh, with the possible exception of India, are quite competitive with each other. Actually, even India uh, in a couple of games uh, too. Um, I don't think uh, India will be the whipping boy here. I, I actually don't like that expression, but I, I don't think they'll uh, be... Uh, you know, a guaranteed loss to these teams. How about you? Yeah, I agree. I think India are showing slow and steady improvement. And as we mentioned, we kind of hope that that's the start of a positive trend for them. I don't see them as being as high as 100th in the rankings as FIFA puts them, but I probably don't see them quite as low as 143rd um, as ELO either. Probably somewhere in the middle would seem to make a bit of sense. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more there. Um, uh, definitely uh, not six points behind Syria uh, for sure, but not 40 points behind either. Um, I would love to see them do well in the cup, but they're just so unpredictable. Like uh, we talked in the, in, the, uh, in the history section that they should be doing much better than they are. Just kind of waiting for that to come to some fruition. Yeah, I think there's two sides of India. There's, there's the India that lost to Guam, and there's the India that thumped Thailand, and maybe for <laughs> Syria too. They've you know they've lost to Palestine a couple times in a couple different tournaments, but then they went and beat Tunisia, who are a really strong team. So, you know, both teams can be hot and cold. And I think in India particularly, they you know they need to be at their best here. But you, you kind of hope for for the the best version of themselves uh, to come out in this cup. Yeah, you mentioned Sunil Chetri, and uh, you know, obviously, they should have, uh, they shouldn't be just so reliant on one player. I think uh, he is like thirty-seven or something now. Um, do you know? 
Yeah, 39, I was looking at. Oh, up. there's 39, wow. So, yeah, obviously they can't rely on him. He, he's kind of evergreen, but this has got to be his last cup, and uh, he still seems to be performing for them, though. Yeah. Do you see India um, perhaps being able to surpass one of the teams above them? Oh, I mean, uh, it's so hard to know. I mean, um, you know, the one competition we looked at where they did challenge Kuwait and Palestine would suggest that they could challenge uh, Syria here, but that was a home competition and they seem to uh, do well at home uh, and not so well away from home. Uh, if they brought what they brought against Thailand in 2019, I think they they could certainly uh, get some points. But I don't think I would uh, I would see them finishing outside of last place here. I hope so, though. I mean, I kind of hope they I, I kind of hope that it's a tight group. Uh, that's my hope. Yeah, I think it will be a tight group. We have some groups where we kind of are expecting the the pot 14 to get zero points but i don't think that's the case here yeah exactly and and if it is a tight group that raises the chances of a third place uh, team uh advancing um uh sometimes i'm not sure how the math works exactly actually if india uh, uh gets some points it could kind of work against that but do you see a a third place team coming out of this group i think it's what four of the six teams yeah, I definitely, I definitely think so. I could see Syria and Uzbekistan, for example, you know, going one win, one draw, one loss, or possibly even a little bit better. And I think if the third place team finishes with three or four points, then the, they got an okay chance at moving on. But you're right, India could really play a spoiler here. Yeah. Um, I think teams will need to beat India or at least find that win from somewhere to, to in order to advance. Yeah, I don't know if I'm talking more in hope or or expectation. I think I'm talking more uh, in hopes that it's going to be a tight group. I'd love to see Uzbekistan and Syria kind of get back to form. And I don't know, there's something in me that uh, that, that likes the underdog. So I'm kind of hoping that Australia will will give up a couple of points. Not that I have anything against them. Yeah, I, I agree. Nothing against Australia, but I think... With a couple almost teams and and a sleeping giant in India, you kind of would like to see, as I said, them bring their best versions of themselves. Yeah, that's right. So I think uh, I think well, I always uh, kind of try to pin you down. So maybe I'll start with that before uh, before saying my prediction. Connor, it is time for you I, to lay down your smack. I think this will be a, a competitive group. It's one of the ones I'm quite excited about. Um, I'm going to say Australia win the group with maybe seven points. Um, I mentioned my soft spot for Uzbekistan, so I'm going to go with pot order and say them second. And then I'll say Syria and India uh, third and fourth. Yeah, I talk about uh, kind of hope and expectation. Uh, honestly, I think my expectation is uh, pot order uh, just like you. But, um, you know, yeah, I hope it'll be competitive in there with a couple of... Uh, couple of um, unexpected results uh, with some of the lower teams doing better but I really uh, I really can't predict confidently that it will go anything other than pot order yeah I, and even that I wouldn't predict confidently um, but uh, yeah we'll see how this group plays out yeah yeah hopefully it will be interesting all right well that uh, brings us to the end of group B and so uh, I guess we will meet again to talk about Group C. We'll see you next time. We originally planned to tag on our past, present and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10-minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. I'd like to thank Navur Abachan and Pixabay for the wonderful music you hear in this media cast. The title is called Arabic Trap. <laughs> <laughs>